That evening, Nandini was sitting on the Hamsadulika couch in the Lata Mandapam, writing a letter. She wrote only a few lines. While writing, sometimes her body trembled like a young flag shaking in a whirlwind. She sighed often. In that cold time, the nurse was standing beside her, fanning herself with a peacock fan, but her marble forehead was dripping with pearls of sweat. Here is the letter she wrote. After really hesitating, thinking, and thinking, and writing the above epistle, he looked at the fanning nurse and said, Bodhi. Go and fetch the Prince of Kadampur at once. Said Nandini. Dathai went and fetched Kandan Maran and left her standing a little away. Kandan Maran's eyes narrowed to look up at Nandini. Kandan Maran stood somewhere looking at the garden. Sir. Sit down. The tremor in Nandini's voice made Kandan Maran look at her face. Nandini continued, No wonder Kundave Devi's eyes cannot see me. She said and smiled. Those words broke Kandan Maran's heart. Her smile made his head spin. A thousand Kundavas are no match for one Nandini Devi. He said. Yet, if I lay Abrati moves a finger, you will go to the heavens and bring Indra's throne. If I repent and pray, you will not even sit down. Kandan Maran immediately sat on the platform in front of him and said, If you work, I will go to Brahma Loka and bring back the head of Brahma. He said. Nandini shivered. Kandan looked away without looking at Maran and said, Brahma has four heads left to kill Parama Shiva. Even if they kill one more, Brahma will survive. She said. Devi. Say anything else. But don't praise me only about Kundave Devi. My blood boils to think of her intercession for the traitor Vandiyadeva. Said Kandan Maran. Yet this morning there their imaginations were indeed great. How fanciful you were of the sudden battle between you and your friend. Nandini's words made Kandan Maran a little shy. Shouldn't there be something to say about how I met him? So I told you. It's true that he stabbed me in the back. He said. Sir. Wouldn't it be good if you could recollect everything that happened that day? Said Nandini. Even you doubt my word, what? No doubt. But you have forgotten some things. One day they will bring Vandiyadeva into prison. Then the accusations against him will prove to be true, won't they? I have no problem with that. I still want to forgive him. I appreciate your generosity, but it is better to be sure of the truth between us. Remember once more what happened that night. You met the Reaper and me on the way when you came through the dungeon. Do you remember that? I remember it well. I will never forget it as long as I live. Don't you remember what you said then? I don't remember what I said. I fainted when I saw them. But I remember well what you said. Sir. I have heard so much about the beauty of their Kumari. But all that is not true. Oh my! Did I say that? That's why his face turns so red. Even now he doesn't like it that much when he sees me. Nandini smiled and said, It doesn't matter if he doesn't like you, you like him, don't you? That's enough. She said. Devi. I'm telling the truth. What's the point of hiding from them? I don't like him either, said Kandan Maran. Never mind. I like him, that is enough. How much penance have I done to get such a husband? She said. Hearing this, Kandan Maran was confused. He did not know anything to say. Then let it go, what did you do after you saw us in the dungeon? Asked Nandini. The guard who came with the torch led the way. I even went in their memory. The guard moved, leaving the secret wall open. I entered it. Immediately someone stabbed me in the back, that's all I remember. Vandiyadeva must have somehow known that I would be there and was waiting outside. No, sir. Their guess is too good. He never waits outside. You two have joined his party. Why should I join his party? What's in it for me? Or what's in it for him? I feel certain now that it should have happened. Tell me, goddess. Tell me how. 
Van Dye the van is not waiting outside. Who was waiting behind? There's no one else, did I say Van Dye the van isn't waiting outside? He's waiting inside that treasure dungeon. What? What? How is that possible, goddess? He suddenly disappeared mysteriously that day. How could he have disappeared? Think for yourself. Somehow he got into the treasure dungeon and learned all the secrets there. Then, he has been following you. When you opened the door, he pushed himself out from behind. Then maybe his conscience prompted him. He took it to the house of the dumb and left it. Devi. It must have happened as you said, there is no doubt. All these days this did not reach my intellect, neither did others. If you ask who in this Chola country is the most intelligent, I will say you. There are people of knowledge in this world and there are people of beauty. Those who combine both are in the creation of Brahma. It is a rare thing to see. I see that beauty and knowledge are combined in them. Kandan Moran said ecstatically. Sir. Is what you just said a sincere word? Or is it the flattery that men in the world give to women? No flattery, I said what was truly on my mind. So will you trust me completely? Will you do me a favor? Whatever I can do, I'm willing to do it. You must go to Kanchi for me. Even if you tell me to go to Kasi, I will. There is no need to go that far. I will give a letter to Prince Aditha Kari Kaler at Kanchi. It must be delivered to him. Enclose and invite him as a guest at their Kadampur Palace. Devi. What word do you mean? Don't they know the arrangements their husbands, my father, and many Chola dignitaries are making about the kingdom? Well, I know some more news than that. Sir. Their family, my family, and many great families are standing on the threshold of great danger. Do you know who is to blame? Tell me, goddess. It was the Badaga who came here as a guest this afternoon. Oh. You mean the younger brat? I am talking about that cobra. A snake knows a snake's feet. This Nandini knows the tricks of Kundave. She has sent your friend Vandiyathevan to Sri Lanka. Do you know why? It is a big lie to bring herbs. She is not worried about the survival of Sundara Chola. Madhurand Hagar should not come to the title after him. Aditha Kari Kaler she should not come to the title. She wants her great uncle Arul Mazivarman to come. If Arul Mazivarman gets the title, she can sway him as she likes. Then Kundave Devi is the emperor of the Chola Empire. Do you know who the emperor is? Your friend Van Dye the Van. Aha. Really? We have to stop this somehow. I have to tell my father and the revenants immediately. It's no use telling them. They won't believe you. You have to beat Kundave's trick with an alternative trick. If you help, you can. Command, Goddess. Take this leaf with all care and give it to Aditha Kari Kaler in Kanchi. Will you give it? Saying that, she held out the roll of straw and the tube to put it on. Kandan Moran, who was in a frenzy of love, instead of buying the straw and the pipe, took Nandini's hand and said, I will do anything for you. He muttered. At that moment, a loud noise was heard. Palyavetarayar was hurrying along the path from the palace to the Lata Mandapam. The nurse was startled and stood away from the unexpected visitor. There was a large parrot chained to a triangle hanging from the beam of the hall. In his haste, the hunter grabbed the parrot without realizing it. The momentum from his mind flowed through his hand. The parrot's wings beat violently. The parrot squealed unable to bear the cruel grip of the predator.